with Gati Kara, translated by Bhikkhu Sujato. So I have heard. At one time the Buddha was wandering in the land of the Kosalans together with a large Sangha of mendicants. Then the Buddha left the road, and at a certain spot he smiled. Then Venerable Ananda thought, What is the cause, what is the reason why the Buddha smiled? Realised ones do not smile for no reason. Then Ananda got up from his seat, arranged his robe over one shoulder, raised his joined palms towards the Buddha and said, What is the cause, what is the reason why the Buddha smiled? Realised ones do not smile for no reason. Once upon a time, Ananda, there was a market town in this spot named Vebhalinga. It was successful and prosperous and full of people. And Kasapa, a blessed one, a perfected one, a fully awakened Buddha, lived supported by Vebhalinga. It was here, in fact, that he had his monastery, where he sat and advised the mendicant Sangha. Then Ananda spread out his outer robe, folded in four, and said to the Buddha, Well then, sir, may the blessed one sit here. Then this piece of land will have been occupied by two perfected ones, fully awakened Buddhas. The Buddha sat on the seat spread out. When he was seated, he said to Venerable Ananda, Once upon a time, Ananda, there was a market town in this spot named Vebhalinga. It was successful and prosperous and full of people. And Kasapa, a blessed one, a perfected one, a fully awakened Buddha, lived supported by Vebhalinga. It was here, in fact, that he had his monastery, where he sat and advised the mendicant Sangha. The Buddha Kasapa had as chief attendant in Vebhalinga a potter named Gatikara. Gatikara had a dear friend named Jyotipala, a Brahmin student. Then Gatikara addressed Jyotipala. Come, dear Jyotipala, let's go to see the Blessed One Kasapa, the Perfected One, the Fully Awakened Buddha, for I regard it as holy to see that Blessed One. When he said this, Jyotipala said to him, Enough, dear Gatikara, what's the use of seeing that baldy, that fake ascetic? For a second time, and a third time, Gatikara addressed Jyotipala. Come, dear Jyotipala, let's go to see the Blessed One Kasapa, the Perfected One, the Fully Awakened Buddha, for I regard it as holy to see that Blessed One. For a third time Jyotipala said to him, Enough, dear Gatikara, what's the use of seeing that baldy, that fake ascetic? Well then, dear Jyotipala, Let's take some bathing paste of powdered shell and go to the river to bathe. Yes, dear, replied Jyotipala. So that's what they did. Then Gatikara addressed Jyotipala. Dear Jyotipala, the Buddha Kasapa's monastery is not far away. Let's go to see the Blessed One Kasapa, the Perfected One, the Fully Awakened Buddha. For I regard it as holy to see that Blessed One. When he said this, Jyotipala said to him, Enough, dear Gatikara, what's the use of seeing that baldy, that fake ascetic? For a second time, and a third time, Gatikara addressed Jyotipala. Dear Jyotipala, the Buddha Kasapa's monastery is not far away. Let's go to see the Blessed One Kasapa, the Perfected One, the Fully Awakened Buddha for I regard it as holy to see that Blessed One. For a third time Jyotipala said to him, Enough, dear Gatikara, what's the use of seeing that baldy, that fake ascetic? Then Gatikara grabbed Jyotipala by the belt and said, Dear Jyotipala, the Buddha Kasapa's monastery is not far away. Let's go to see the Blessed One Kasapa, the Perfected One, the Fully Awakened Buddha for I regard it as holy to see that Blessed One. So Jyotipala undid his belt and said to Gatikara, Enough, dear Gatikara, what's the use of seeing that baldy, that fake ascetic? 
Then Gatikara grabbed Jyotipala by the hair of his freshly washed head and said, Dear Jyotipala, the Buddha Kasapa's monastery is not far away. Let's go to see the Blessed One Kasapa, the Perfected One, the Fully Awakened Buddha, for I regard it as holy to see that Blessed One. Then Jyotipala thought, It's incredible. It's amazing how this potter Gatikara, though born in a lower caste, should presume to grab me by the hair of my freshly washed head. This must be no ordinary matter. He said to Gatikara, You'd even milk it to this extent, dear Gatikara. I even milk it to this extent, dear Jyotipala, for that is how holy I regard it to see that blessed one. Well then, dear Gatikara, release me, we shall go. Then Gatikara the potter and Jyotipala the Brahmin student went to the Buddha Kasapa. Gatikara bowed and sat down to one side, but Jyotipala exchanged greetings with the Buddha and sat down to one side. Gatikara said to the Buddha Kasapa, Sir, this is my dear friend Jyotipala, a Brahmin student. Please teach him the Dhamma. Then the Buddha Kasapa educated, encouraged, fired up and inspired Gatikara and Jyotipala with a Dhamma talk. Then they got up from their seat, bowed and respectfully circled the Buddha Kasapa, keeping him on their right, before leaving. Then Jyotipala said to Gatikara, Dear Gatikara, you have heard this teaching, so why don't you go forth from the lay life to homelessness? Don't you know, dear Jyotipala, that I look after my blind old parents? Well then, dear Katikara, I shall go forth from the lay life to homelessness. Then Gatikara and Jyotipala went to the Buddha Kasapa, bowed and sat down to one side. Gatikara said to the Buddha Kasapa, Sir, this is my dear friend Jyotipala, a Brahmin student. Please give him the going forth. And Jyotipala, the Brahmin student, received the going forth, the ordination in the Buddha's presence. Not long after Jyotipala's ordination, a fortnight later, the Buddha Kasapa, having stayed in Vebhalinga as long as he wished, set out for Benares. Travelling stage by stage, he arrived at Benares, where he stayed near Benares, in the deer park at Isipatana. King Kiki of Kazi heard that he had arrived. King Kiki had the finest carriages harnessed. Then he mounted a fine carriage and, along with other fine carriages, set out in full royal pomp from Benares to see the Buddha Kasapa. He went by carriage as far as the terrain allowed, then descended and approached the Buddha Kasapa on foot. He bowed and sat down to one side. Then the Buddha, educated, encouraged, fired up and inspired him with a Dhamma talk. Then King Kiki said to the Buddha, Sir, would the Buddha, together with the mendicant Sangha, please accept tomorrow's meal from me? The Buddha Kasapa consented in silence. Then, knowing that the Buddha had consented, King Kiki got up from his seat, bowed and respectfully circled the Buddha, keeping him on his right before leaving. And when the night had passed, King Kiki had a variety of delicious foods prepared in his own home, soft saffron rice with the dark grains picked out, served with many soups and sauces. Then he had the Buddha informed of the time, saying, Sir, it's time, the meal is ready. Then Kasapa Buddha robed up in the morning and, taking his bowl and robe, went to the home of King Kiki, where he sat on the seat spread out, together with the Sangha of Mendicants. Then King Kiki served and satisfied the Mendicant Sangha, headed by the Buddha, with his own hands, with a variety of delicious foods. When the Buddha Kasapa had eaten and washed his hand and bowl, King Kiki took a low seat and sat to one side. There he said to the Buddha Kasapa, Sir, May the Buddha please accept my invitation to reside in Benares for the rainy season. The Sangha will be looked after in the same style. 
Enough, great king. I have already accepted an invitation for the rain's residence. For a second time and a third time, King Kiki said to the Buddha Kasapa, Sir, may the Buddha please accept my invitation to reside in Benares for the rainy season. The Sangha will be looked after in the same style. Enough, great king. I have already accepted an invitation for the rain's residence. Then King Kiki, thinking, The Buddha does not accept my invitation to reside for the rains in Benares, became sad and upset. Then King Kiki said to the Buddha Kasapa, Sir, do you have another attendant better than me? Great King, there is a market town named Vebhalinga, where there's a potter named Gatikara. He's my chief attendant. Now, great king, you thought, the Buddha does not accept my invitation to reside for the rains in Benares, and you became sad and upset. But Gatikara doesn't get upset, nor will he. Gatikara has gone for refuge to the Buddha, the teaching, and the Sangha. He doesn't kill living creatures, steal, commit sexual misconduct, lie, or take alcoholic drinks that cause negligence. He has experiential confidence in the Buddha, the teaching, and the Sangha, and has the ethics loved by the noble ones. He is free of doubt regarding suffering, its origin, its cessation, and the practice that leads to its cessation. He eats in one part of the day, he celibate, ethical, and of good character. He has set aside gems and gold and rejected gold and money. He's put down the shovel and doesn't dig the earth with his own hands. He takes what has been crumbled off by a river bank or been dug up by mice and brings it back in a carrier. When he has made a pot, he says, Anyone may leave bagged sesame, mung beans or chickpeas here and take what they wish. He looks after his blind old parents and since he has ended the five lower fetters, Gatikara will be reborn spontaneously and will become extinguished there, not liable to return from that world. This one time, great king, I was staying near the market town of Vebhalinga. Then I robed up in the morning and, taking my bowl and robe, went to the home of Gatikara's parents, where I said to them, Excuse me, where has Bhagava gone? Your attendant has gone out, sir but take rice from the pot and sauce from the pan and eat. So that's what I did. And after eating, I got up from my seat and left. Then Gatikara went up to his parents and said, Who took rice from the pot and sauce from the pan, ate it and left? It was the Buddha Kasapa, my dear. Then Gatikara thought, I'm so fortunate, so very fortunate, in that the Buddha Kasapa trusts me so much. Then joy and happiness did not leave him for a fortnight, or his parents for a week. Another time, great king, I was staying near the same market town of Ebhalinga. Then I robed up in the morning and, taking my bowl and robe, went to the home of Gatikara's parents, where I said to them, Excuse me, where has Bhagava gone? Your attendant has gone out, sir but take porridge from the pot and sauce from the pan and eat. So that's what I did. And after eating, I got up from my seat and left. Then Gatikara went up to his parents and said, Who took porridge from the pot and sauce from the pan, ate it and left? It was the Buddha Kasapa, my dear. Then Gatikara thought, I'm so fortunate, so very fortunate, to be trusted so much by the Buddha Kasapa. Then joy and happiness did not leave him for a fortnight or his parents for a week. Another time, great king, I was staying near that same market town of Vebhalinga. Now at that time my hut leaked, so I addressed the mendicants. Mendicants, go to Gatikara's home and find some grass. When I said this, those mendicants said to me, Sir, there's no grass there, but his workshop has a grass roof. Then go to the workshop and strip the grass. 
So that's what they did. Then Gatikara's parents said to those mendicants, Who's stripping the grass from the workshop? It's the mendicants, sister. The Buddha's hut is leaking. Take it, sirs, take it, my dears. Then Gatikara went up to his parents and said, Who stripped the grass from the workshop? It was the mendicants, dear. It seems the Buddha's hut is leaking. Then Gatikara thought, I'm so fortunate, so very fortunate to be trusted so much by the Buddha Kasapa. Then joy and happiness did not leave him for a fortnight or his parents for a week. Then the workshop remained with the sky for a roof for the whole three months, but no rain fell on it. And that great king is what Gatikara the potter is like. Gatikara the potter is fortunate, very fortunate, to be so trusted by the Buddha Kasapa. Then King Kiki sent around five hundred cartloads of rice, soft saffron rice, and suitable sauce to Gatikara. Then one of the king's men approached Gatikara and said, Sir, these five hundred cartloads of rice, soft saffron rice, and suitable sauce have been sent to you by King Kiki of Kazi. Please accept them. The king has many duties and much to do. I have enough. Let this be for the king himself. Ananda, you might think, surely the Brahmin student Jyotipala must have been someone else at that time. But you should not see it like this. I myself was the student Jyotipala at that time. That is what the Buddha said. Satisfied, Venerable Ananda was happy with what the Buddha said.